I like to show this uh, many times over uh, because the uh, it's, it shows the uh, all causes of death in France uh, about about 12 years ago. Um, and you see the Gompers curve here, the pale one, right? And then uh, except for those uh, lines over here, if you see down there, which are the uh, early childhood deaths and accidents and suicides, uh, about 200 of diseases, half of them malignant and half of them degenerative, uh, somehow run all of these spaghettis, run with the same, roughly the same slope as the death uh, 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 slope in the Gompers curve here, which should, of course says by itself that they have very similar uh, biological clock. And the simplest of, uh, of, of uh, reasons for that would be that they have a common cause. Now, this is, you know, I like to be naive and, uh, and, and, and then see what mistakes I made. Uh, but this meant that if there is a common cause to all of these diseases, which is 90% causes of death that are age related, um, then it, it would be much simpler to mitigate all of them together, then any, then to pick any single one, which is sort of counterintuitive that, that to do a lot would be simpler than, than, than to do uh, uh, something uh, uh, specific. And if this were done, what one would expect? Well, uh, perhaps that we would all live like, uh, you know, up to age of Jean Calment, who we saw. Uh, uh, to, to be centenarians. And so this, this was, this was titillating me uh, to start to, you know, leave bacteria and, uh, and, people and think about uh, our own age-related diseases. I hear somebody else talking. Uh, hello, can you hear me? That is some something is interfering. Hi, U Uri, do you mind turning off your uh, microphone and video? Mm. Hello. Okay, fantastic. I may have done it. Thank you, Uri. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we come to this. I'm I'm seeking simplicity. Okay, that you will understand everything. If why why do I do what I do? Is is thing, is it possible that things are still, Simple. Yeah, there, not there. Not yes. Oh. yes, you report the 24 hours. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 if, uh, if, uh, Louise, if you could somehow uh, mute, mute uh, Uri. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Right. Yeah, I have done that. Okay. okay. Um, this is from a something that could simplify things. Is uh, this is from a review by Brian Kennedy, uh, comparing what you see here: aging in vertebrates in mammals and then human progerias, and of this uh, quite reduced uh, complexity uh, uh, that you see, uh, they concluded that the the, the common uh, uh, elements are ROS free radicals and tissue homeostasis. I will today address what our thinking, uh, really mainly the, the, the ideas, the concepts uh, concerning the, the, the ROS and probably won't have time for uh, tissue homeostasis. Um, uh, in, for those who will miss, so if I speak uh, 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 poorly, you can see uh, the story in this paper with Anita who was uh, my collaborator and, 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 and colleague for, for, for many years, 10 years. Uh, now, what we did, Anita, uh, mainly with myself, was to wonder how, what is special about extremely robust resistance, undestructible uh, creatures such as Dinococcus radiodurans, this is here, DRIA, or an animal, uh, uh, Adineta vaga, a, a Bdeloid rotifer, uh, 
uh, where we, of course, uh, collaborated with uh, my uh, master, uh, Matthew Meselson, who works on them uh, almost 30 years now. And um, if we would be putting here doses of UV in jewels or, or, or grays or, or, or kilograys in, of gamma ray in, on, the, on the abscissa here, then for these organisms, uh, Dinococcus versus E. coli, uh, Deloid rotifer versus C. elegans, this would have to be stretched for, for 50 fold or something like that, because such is a difference between uh, the killing of germline cells in rotifers or, or C. elegans, which means sterilizing uh, them by, by uh, gamma rays, uh, and compared to, to bacteria. But if instead we put uh, nanomoles of carbonyls per milligram protein, then this hugely stressed, uh, uh, stretched, sorry, um, the uh, x-axis here uh, uh, collapses into practically one uh, correlation. And this is the correlation between uh, uh, the level of uh, protein carbonyls per milligram, per milligram protein for all of these four uh, 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 organisms and two treatments, UV and, and gamma. In a single one, uh, if you, you see here the killing, of course, one cannot kill more than 100%. Uh, the similarity was really striking. And it says, uh, uh, I think, uh, as Matt Meselson uh, commented also, that there is no space. Uh, if we ask the question, is protein carbonylation measuring the chemistry of death? It must be yes. And there is no, not much space left for any alternative hypothesis that does not involve protein carbonylation in cell death. So this is cell death, not, uh, not aging. Now this cell death, uh, which concerns, I guess, uh, uh, all, all, all or, or most certainly, or all of the uh, degenerative diseases that are caused by the lo loss of cell mass, the cells die. This death actually happens uh, in Dinococcus radiodurans at 1% one, at one survival, roughly, uh, here. Uh, it, it occurs 10 hours after radiation. One can diagnose the death by the leakage of the uh, mem cell membrane, which is Alexa dye positive cells, uh, about 10 hours after radiation. Now, when we follow the protein carbonylation, of course, because of radiation uh, immediately after radiation, one sees a, about tenfold increase in, in in carbonylation, and this is the level a, at higher doses it will stay. This is the plateau. Everything that all proteins that are oxidable are oxidized. But follow what happens at, from that plateau. Uh, after eight hours, there's a huge increase, three to four times, which is a lot, uh, in carbonylation above what was at the radiation time, the maximum. Of, uh, of, protein, uh, of protein damage. Uh, and this precedes by roughly an hour or two uh, the uh, cell death. Now, given what I said, I, we thought of course that this could be only newly synthesized proteins. There's no memory now of irradiation here to punish the proteins further above the saturation level, but that they are probably newly synthesized and sure enough, you can see here that if we prevent de novo protein synthesis initiation of protein synthesis, which is important, by casugamycin or even a, a, a transcription by rifampicin, then this huge increase in, uh, in, in protein carbonylation does not occur anymore. I won't comment here the uh, spectacular DNA repair, uh, 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 but we'll show you uh, the, uh, the picture uh, of what happens uh, with this dose uh, of 14 kilogray, which leaves 1% of survival roughly, uh, we can see by propidium iodide that are red, that they are practically all dead, but 
if one adds at six hours uh, casugamycin, if one prevents de novo protein synthesis that you can, that correlates with, with this, right? Uh, in that case, microscopically, the cells are not dead, i.e. their membranes are mostly, uh, 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 there's the integrity of their membrane and the micro microscopists will say most of these cells are alive, but actually they're, actually they are dead. So we have here the notion of producing toxic uh, uh, proteins that are newly synthesized and presumably at this dose, the ribosomes are sufficiently damaged to make a lot of uh, uh, mistakes. And uh, this, uh, this amazed us in a way with, with uh, by preventing with an antibiotics, sort of one saves uh, quote unquote life of, of the cells. Now, uh, with Anita, we wanted to see, uh, again, as mentioned by, by uh, Ariel, at constant uh, genome, we wanted to see uh, how would, uh, does protein carbonylation specifically targeted to proteins, not increasing ROS and damaging everything else, uh, would that have a phenotype? And whatever we measure, it did, but I'll show you here, I think the most spectacular one, which is deleting the TIG, the earliest chaperone, which sits uh, a ribosome associated chaperone or the well-known DNA K chaperone. Uh, the mutation rate is circles here and, and, and squares are carbonyls. So the carbonyls increase from the wild type here uh, over to this level by deleting one of these two important chaperones. Mutation rate goes uh, hundredfold up also. But the question is now, is this due to misfolding caused by the uh, uh, absence of one or the other of the, cha of the uh, chaperones by self, or is it the oxidation that uh, occurred, uh, that is stimulated greatly, by the way, uh, by, the, uh, by the misfolding of, of proteins due to the def deficit of chaperones. And now you can see that mutation rate uh, and carbonylation goes down with vitamin E uh, added, uh, is added here in the medium. Uh, and proportionally, as, 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 as much as protein oxidation is reduced, so is reduced the mutation rate by, by, by two logs. So the phenotype, uh, a reversible one, uh, one of the phenotypes of damage of, of targeted damage of, of, of damage uh, uh, exclusively to increase damage exclusively to proteins, you can see uh, a huge increase in mutation. We sort of calculated it. So it's a, uh, the, mu the mutation rate increases much, much more by damaging the proteins than damaging the DNA because damaging DNA is repaired by fit proteins and when the proteins are not fit, like in this case here, then even the damage to DNA uh, uh, remains in the cell. So one of the prominent phenotypes of exclusive damage, oxidative damage to proteins is a huge increase in mutation rate. And then we started switching to, to other creatures and, 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 and even humans. And this is a compilation, which is not our work, but uh, the descendants of the Earl Stadman's uh, school, showing that if you put here a fraction of lifespan, and this is only two or, or three weeks for the nematode, and there's a hundred years for, for humans, that uh, the carbonylation increases uh, 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 either steadily or is biphasic, one cannot say, uh, with, with age. It correlates with age just as it correlates with cell uh, killing. Now, to summarize, uh, I think one 
a, a very significant contribution of uh, Anita's work uh, in this paper here is that the two areas of uh, study of uh, aging in relation to oxidative stress and to misfolding, that the two areas uh, are merge, overlap now in as the consequence of uh, our experiments and thinking. Uh, and I call this competitive antagonism between protein folding and oxidation. Uh, now, protein misfolding, you saw uh, uh, the ones due to errors at the ribosomal level that Ariel just showed. Uh, these are stochastic, uh, one at the time errors, but you can consider that silent mutation, uh, which is, you know, protein polymorphism uh, that exists, that they are fixed errors in the sense that all of the uh, proteins in, in the cell or organism uh, that uh, inherited this gene mutation, that that silent mutation, silent phenotypically, uh, and we will call it polymorphism, uh, is also a case of uh, misfolding, always the same, but in all of the molecules of, of protein molecules. And, and that there is uh, some dynamics between, of course, uh, uh, unfolding, misfolding, and, and refolding. And now this uh, misfolded state uh, may even be uh, 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 unstable and reversible. But if the ROS reaches it first, and this state here greatly increase, increases the, uh, sorry, I think I have shown, yeah. Uh, the um, sensitivity of this protein, uh, you will see in a moment how much, uh, compared to the nicely natively folded uh, protein. So if ROS reaches it and, 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 and damages it, then the chaperones cannot bring, if, if this is a carbonylation, they cannot uh, uh, salvage this protein anymore. Here, it can be salvaged by chaperones, of course, and become resistant to oxidation. Here, the misfolded state is fixed, is paralyzed, and this uh, state here is the one that induces heat shock response, by the way, because it's a stable, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a stable misfolded structure. And of course, uh, you know that this, uh, uh, this structure here functions well, and this is the function, whereas the, uh, this monomer that is oxidized will lead to mis malfunction. This could be the DNA replication and repair proteins that cause, uh, cause in, the, in the previous slide, hundredfold increase in spontaneous mutation rate. Uh, but there is also, of course, a clearing by proteolysis, or, uh, and if not cleared, they will aggregate. Uh, and the aggregation or proteolysis would lead to the loss of function, to the loss of functional proteins, or to the acquisition of toxic function, the one that kills uh, the irradiated cells uh, 10 hours later. Uh, now, this is to show you uh, where are the bottlenecks to, uh, uh, to the toxic uh, damageable uh, uh, protein carbonylation. One is the classical one, and both here, streptomycin, which causes uh, errors at the ribosomal level and therefore misfolding, and this is the hydrogen peroxide. So one would think that this would be the best agent to oxidize proteins in E. coli. This is just a part of the 2D, 2D gel from this paper here. Uh, uh, and, and you can see that just subtoxic hydrogen peroxide uh, oxidize these protein spots here as compared to control. But just subtoxic streptomycin caused a disaster. So in a sense, uh, protein folding is, is a much more important bottleneck in uh, oxidative protein damage than is the uh, ROS itself. The same can be seen here. Uh, again, Anita's experiment, uh, uh, I don't know, ten, nine, 10 years ago. Uh, you can see that looking at carbonylated proteins in 1D uh, gel, that uh, there's an increase 
in deleting either DNA K or TIG, and uh, there is a decrease reduction of protein carbonylation by overexpressing GROIL, GROIS uh, 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 chaperones. Uh, is a clearing, and these three bands, by the way, are GRO, E, L, and S uh, proteins here. Uh, so this gives you the idea wh why, why this cartoon here, and why uh, I call this competitive uh, antagonism, uh, in the sense that to have the phenotype, uh, deleterious uh, phenotypes, uh, one needs oxidation to make this state irreversible and therefore phenotypic in, in aging and, and diseases as we see. Now, uh, the case of a fixed mutation is the first, first of our experiments, so I'm always uh, uh, emotional about showing it all over again, although I'm bored uh, uh, by it. But this was uh, testing whether two famous uh, mutations in alpha-synuclein that predispose uh, either the red one to Parkinson at the age of about 50 or 60, uh, and the other one, the blue, uh, uh, predisposes to Parkinson already at 30. These are purified protein in, in the test tube, and they are radiated uh, by gamma rays, and, and carbonylation is quantified. You can see this is for the wild type, uh, uh, alpha synuclein like yours and mine. Uh, this is the red mutation, and this is the blue. So the intrinsic oxidability of this protein here uh, uh, increases uh, uh, and increases greatly here uh, by, uh, uh, due to the, to the single amino acid substitution. And there is a correlation between the severity, uh, age of onset and severity of disease uh, that correspond with these three cases only, that corresponds nicely to the physical property of the protein bearing blue mutation or bearing red. Uh, the, 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 the oxidability of the, these proteoforms in a way uh, that co speaks, correlates, is connected to the destiny of patients that uh, carry this mutation. Now, in order to see uh, the uh, evolution of, of damage with, with different uh, 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 those we use the uh, oxidation against by UV, which gives the same pattern, by the way, as the uh, as the uh, 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 metal catalyzed uh, uh, oxidation, and followed with this is the work of uh, Guillaume Combe in collaboration with our colleagues physicists uh, in Lyon, uh, Antoine uh, Rodolphe. Uh, this beta sheet here gets first oxidized at the low. Uh, UV dose. Then at the higher one, uh, you can see the beta sheet is, is still oxidized and the other ones are added. And at the higher one, of course, the most sensitive one, the beta sheet is oxidized. And the second uh, 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 most sensitive site is oxidized and third and so on. And here comes the, uh, the uh, uh, oxidation at this uh, relatively high uh, UV dose. This is to show that uh, repeatedly the they are the most sensitive and then less sensitive and less sensitive uh, lysines usually here uh, that get oxidized and at, at higher uh, oxidation rate, there's always the, included the, the, the most sensitive one and then the next one and, and so on. Uh, this is of course ba uh, put on the uh, uh, structure of normal uh, non-oxidized lysozyme doesn't tell you anything about the effect of, of, of mutation. Now, um, we switched, uh, thanks to the generosity of uh, Professor Kitty in, 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 in Firenze, uh, and you provided us with uh, clones of SOD1 protein mutants that, are, that predispose to ALS uh, or Charcot disease, amylotropic lateral sclerosis, and when they've done with uh, Professor Dobson in Cambridge, a brilliant work on correlating uh, uh, the destabilizing effect of, of mutations, of these mutations, and the severity of disease. However, 
there is this one, the red one, uh, which is an outlier. Uh, it is as stable as wild type, but predisposes highly to the disease. And very briefly, I am excited about this. There was a phenotype of these gratuitous uh, 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 muta mutations, gratuitous protein with mutations that uh, relate to the onset of human disease because it's a human uh, SOD1 protein. And you can see that even yield of the protein uh, correlates with the stability. This is outlier because it's stable on delta delta G here, just uh, practically like wild type. Um, and you see that the yield in E. coli, uh, these uh, 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 mutations predisposing to disease show phenotype as we try to make the, the proteins. Those that destabilize the protein a lot are produced in, in the uh, low amount. And we looked whether they kill the bacteria, but apparently they, they, they arrest, uh, arrest their, their growth. Very rapidly, uh, this, uh, outlier, stable uh, mutation, but predisposing uh, uh, highly to, to the disease. Uh, indeed, you can see here that uh, those destabilizing mutations in increase the carbon liability. All right, this is the, the highest one, and, and D101 is also the highest one. And when correlated with the uh, patient's survival in years, survival after the diagnosis, uh, then you can see that this um, uh, outlier here uh, uh, is, is now uh, no, no more outlier in, 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 in correlation as it is outlier here. Uh, in a way, uh, carbonylability of mutants that uh, predispose to disease and affect the carbonation, carbonylability correlates with the disease uh, onset and severity better than the destabilization than delta delta G. And so I'll, I think I'll, I have to finish, do I? Of course. Um, by summarizing this, that in uh, producing oxidized proteins, which I, which I think are the, uh, uh, the main uh, functional noise in, in, involved in, in healthy aging, uh, we, we, we have two uh, uh, key variables. One is uh, misfolded protein, the other is ROS. We still need ROS to, to, to oxidize it. And then uh, these oxidized proteins produce phenotypes. For example, as monomers, they would show, say, increased mutation rate or uh, any, any kind of phenotype you, you, you wish. It could be the malignant one, especially with DNA alterations. And then come the Toxic oligomers seen with several, hello, with several uh, 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 diseases that small oligomers, trimers, tetramers, pentamers, octamers, uh, kill cells from inside uh, because they have pore-like structures. And then they act like those small peptide antibiotics, which simply drill hole or this uh, 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 pore, uh, oligomeric pore, uh, uh, makes, uh, of course, holes in the membrane, everything leaks out and the cell is dead. We think that this is the basic of the basis of all of degenerative diseases, uh, as opposed to large aggregates, uh, which are often uh, extracellular and, and, and show much lower toxicity than oligomers, but uh, call, pr cause probably conf some co confusion of the immune system being recognized as, as, as foreign and then in, inducing inflammation. Uh, so the, I will skip the part that is uh, phenotypic suppression of, of all these uh, malheur that happen to, to aging cells and to, the, and to indeed to diseases, to the uh, uh, basis of long latency uh, in uh, in onset of same uh, carcinomas after say atomic uh, bomb explosion in Hiroshima and Nagasaki that still with these uh, uh, cellular disasters, the healthy uh, and normal cells can suppress 
the uh, disease phenotype, and this is another subject for another uh, uh, meeting. The, the, the image of that is that there's so much uh, uh, traffic, molecular traffic, and even mitochondrial traffic going on uh, in, in solid tissues that these differences, epigenetic and genetic, that increase with, with age, of course, are averaged uh, and, and sort of uh, uh, homogenized. They, these uh, uh, potentially uh, uh, defective cells uh, uh, are helped by the, by the neighbor, some kind of you know, cell solidarity and phenotypic suppression of, uh, of this diversity, which you see when you make the primary culture of cells, and then this heterogeneity is readily uh, revealed. So this is the idea of cell parabiosis. And I greet you from this nice place and, and, and invite those who haven't been, but especially those who have been uh, 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 to, to, to visit and to, uh, and to enjoy this uh, lovely place from which I greet you very much. We are, as I said, fueled by philanthropy and, and, and I, IP. And thank you very much for, for listening to this sim simplified story.